Welcome back as we move on to learn how to read the scales of the three basic measuring instruments, beginning with a tape measure. Tape measures are used as a quick and easy method of measuring, especially on long distances such as flooring or where machinery is being installed. The tape itself is usually made of thin, springy metal and is able to be pulled out and locked to stop it being pulled back into its case by its return spring action. Most tape measures are marked with numbers that are given in centimeters. Between the centimeter marks are unnumbered millimeter divisions. Measurements begin at the end of the tape on this metal hook and the first centimeter is hidden behind the hook support. However, the millimeters can still be seen. The hook can be placed over the end of whatever we want to measure and the tape pulled out until it reaches the other end of our work. We read the measurement by keeping our eye directly above the end of the workpiece. We then note which line on the tape lines up to the end of the workpiece and that is the reading. In our example, the reading is 45 centimeters plus one, two millimeters. We could say that our workpiece is 45 centimeters and two millimeters long, but that's not really good engineering language. It's better to say that our workpiece is 452 millimeters long, which is made up by saying that 45 centimeters is the same as 450 millimeters plus two millimeters. Have you noticed that one of the unnumbered millimeter lines between every centimeter mark is a little bit longer than the shortest lines? Well, this is done so that you can see every fifth millimeter more easily. Let's go back to our old friend, the matchbox. Using our tape measure, we see a reading of five centimeters plus two millimeters. What should we say the reading is in millimeters? That's correct if you said 52 millimeters. Let's next learn how to read the meter folding rule. You'll notice that both sides of the rule are marked off and as we saw earlier, the markings or numbers are given in millimeters. The rule is marked in 100 millimeter main divisions, 100, 200, 300, 400 and so on. Between each 100 millimeter division you can see numbered divisions going up in stages of 10 millimeters up to 90. The next tenth millimeter being one or more hundred millimeters. This makes things easier for us to read. Let's take an example. If we measure this brick we can see easily that it is 200 and 20 millimeters long. Because of the brass joints on a wooden folding rule, not all the numbers can be printed onto the scale. At the joints, you will see only half centimeters and centimeter lines. The mark at the very center of the big joint is actually the 500 millimeter or half meter mark. We can see the 470 millimeter number. The next centimeter line is therefore 480, the next 490, and the center join 500. What do you think this reading is? It's 510 millimeters. What would the reading be at the first joint? it would be 250 millimeters. We have now looked at two typical measuring instruments and you will often have to use either one of them. The next type of rule you'll often have to use is the steel rule, usually known as an engineer's steel rule. Most engineer's steel rules are made to be 300 millimeters long. This is the standard rule. 
smaller pocket size rules with readings up to 150 millimeters can also be bought. Reading an engineer's rule is basically the same as reading the wooden rule and as you can see the numbers are given in millimeters. If we turn this rule over you will see that the markings are also shown as half millimeters which is the reason that an engineer's rule is more accurate than other types. Some makes of engineer's rules show millimeters and half millimeters on the same face such as this type. Returning to our rule on the millimeter scale we can read the figures 10 up to 290. The very edge of the rule nearest to the figure 10 is the naught or zero position. We always begin our readings at the end edge. You will have noticed that in our example there are two scales and two straight ends. This design allows us to use the rule either way up. Rules that have one end rounded, like this type, always begin their measuring from the other end, that is, the straightened end, which means that in some cases you might have to read the rule upside down. As in other rules, you'll see that every fifth millimeter line is made a little longer than the other millimeter lines. For example, this reading is 25 millimeters. And this reading is 115 millimeters. What is this reading? It is 295 millimeters. Let's turn our rule over now and look at the half millimeters. A half millimeter is very small and to the human eye it is about the smallest reading that we can see with any accuracy. Measuring to accuracies of half a millimeter takes a lot of practice and often we need to use other measuring tools such as calipers to help us take a reading. We shall be covering these tools in a later program in this series. Let's look at our scale through a magnifying glass so that we can see more clearly the half millimeter division. Can you see that we now have 20 divisions between each centimeter? This is because each millimeter has been divided in two to make the half millimeter division line. If we take a reading at this position, for example, it will be 10 and a half millimeters, or in engineering language, 10 comma five millimeters. Have you noticed that the half millimeter lines are shorter than the full millimeter lines? Again, this is to help you see the readings more easily. As you begin to work more and more with measuring instruments, you will become more skilled in reading them. In a later program, we shall be showing you how to apply measuring instruments to various types of work. Stop the tape now and ask your instructor to help you with practical exercises and do the simple test. You can learn more basic engineering skills by watching more programs in this series.